Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. Happy Leif Erikson Day is what I will say the next time it's Leif Erikson Day. But if it's not a holiday, you make one up yourself. And today is Alcohol Day. Happy Alcohol Day, folks. But if only I had somebody to spend it with. Bubble Buddy is the episode where SpongeBob creates a bubble friend when nobody else is able to spend time with him. Like Big Pink Loser, this episode aired on November 16, 2000, and it introduces everybody's favorite bubble character, Bubble Buddy. It's also the episode where we see a character die and ascend into heaven, even though he would reappear in later episodes. This episode also features a guest star of Corky Carroll as Grubby Grouper. Grubby Grouper only appears in this scene, but we can tell he's a world famous surfer. It's a world famous surf from Grubby Grouper! Which is great because Corky Carroll is also a professional surfer in real life, and I really like this. There are a handful of characters in the show that are parodies of real life people who are voiced by their real life counterparts. For example, episode 174, The Krusty Sponge, has a TV food critic named Gene Scallop, who's voiced by movie critic Gene Shalit. You can tell that this is just basically a Spongebob version of this character. This episode is quite memorable thanks to Bubble Buddy, and in my opinion, is something that makes season 2, season 2. Because season 2 introduces a lot of fan favorite characters that everybody remembers, like Bubble Buddy, Doodle Bob, Schoolian Fancy Son, Kevin the Sea Cucumber, etc. These characters would appear in later seasons, but not all of them would have episodes focused on them when they appear. And just because Bubble Buddy's a fan favorite character, that must mean it's an absolute classic, right? Well, let's watch this episode and see how well it truly holds up. So the episode starts up and the French narrator says sometimes Spongebob makes up holidays just to celebrate them, including Lee Erickson Day. Wait, that's real, right? Spongebob wants to hang out with Patrick, but he finds a note saying he's away buying giant paper. Spongebob then tries to hang out with Sandy, but he finds out she went south for the winter because it was snowing in her tree dome. Spongebob asks Squidward, but he didn't want to play. Spongebob decided to literally create a friend, and eventually came up with a bubble friend and named it Bubble Buddy, who he was already having a great time with. Yeah, this is a great time too. Spongebob takes Bubble Buddy to the Krusty Krab and saw Squidward. Spongebob said that he wasn't hungry, but Bubble Buddy was. Squidward refused to take an order for Bubble Buddy, but Mr. Krabs came out of the register and told him to do so. Spongebob looked at the menu and thought everything was so good, he decided to give Bubble Buddy one of everything. Mr. Krabs was overjoyed and told Squidward to take Bubble Buddy to a table. Squidward jokingly suggests giving Bubble Buddy shampoo to drink, but Spongebob said that it tasted weird, and Mr. Krabs told Squidward to think of the customer, so he tasted it for him, saying that he got diet shampoo. Huh, I always wondered what shampoo tastes like. Later on, Squidward gave one of everything for Bubble Buddy, but Spongebob said that Bubble Buddy couldn't eat cheese since there were cheese on the patties. Squidward got annoyed, but after he returned, Spongebob kept giving Squidward more and more ridiculous requests, and when everything was finally done, Squidward was losing patience and furious. After Spongebob and Bubble Buddy finished the food, they left. Mr. Krabs tried to tell Squidward about the importance of the restaurant business, but he soon took Squidward's side when he saw that Spongebob and Bubble Buddy paid with the bubble money which all pop. Meanwhile, Spongebob and Bubble Buddy went to Goo Lagoon and a fish named Scooter told them to bury him. Spongebob went to get cotton candy and left Bubble Buddy with Scooter as the tide came in. Spongebob did more things that pissed off the beachgoers which included putting Bubble Buddy in the porta potty and telling Bubble Buddy to shake his ass which made the dancers think Spongebob insulted them. Oh come on Spongebob, you could have at least clarified that you were talking to Bubble Buddy and not the other dancers. Pearl shook the world famous surfer Grubby Grouper's hand and it became dirty. And Spongebob shook Pearl's hand with Bubble Buddy, cleaning it, making her sad. I know she was awestruck, but does she really want a dirty flipper for the rest of her life? The line for the porta potty became so long and everybody became fed up and got furious when they found out Spongebob kept them waiting for a bubble for two hours straight. Everybody else started to state their problems with Bubble Buddy and Scooter ascended into the heavens after experiencing high tide. He's... dead? Everybody started to form a riot against Bubble Buddy and took their anger out on the lifeguard until Squidward stopped them and decided to pop Bubble Buddy instead. They surrounded Spongebob and Bubble Buddy and stayed there intense on popping Bubble Buddy. Spongebob tried to escape, but this didn't work. 
He then tried to convince the crowd saying Bubble Buddy was his special friend, and some of the crowd had similar friends of their own. Unfortunately, they still intended on popping Bubble Buddy. Right before Squidward was about to, Bubble Buddy came to life, much to everybody's shock. Wait, if he's alive, then did he tell Spongebob to do everything he did? Or did Spongebob do all that because he wanted to? Bubble Buddy left in a bubble taxi, and all the fish were satisfied and left. Spongebob cried at Bubble Buddy leaving and ran away, leaving behind Bubbles, and Squidward said hi to a bubble, and the episode ends. So that was Bubble Buddy, and I have quite a bit to say about this episode. I'll start off by saying, I don't think it's bad, but I wouldn't call it the best either. There are a lot of things I like about this episode. I think the gags with Scooter are pretty funny when he's buried and the tide approaches, and when he's an angel with a halo. I also found Spongebob saying, and Squidward, and Squidward, over and over again to be pretty funny. Spongebob running around at the beginning wanting his friends to play with him and finding out they can't is pretty cool too. I do also like the brief cameo Corky Carroll makes as Grubby Grouper, and of course, all the Leif Erikson Day lines. But I feel like when Spongebob and Bubble Buddy arrive at Goo Lagoon, the episode starts to take a turn for the worse. Since Spongebob put Bubble Buddy in the stall and everybody started to get fed up with the long way, I'm not sure if that was done well. Spongebob was clearly the one doing everything. He was the one who made Pearl shake hands with Bubble Buddy. He was the one who made everybody wait for two hours at the stall. And since Bubble Buddy was not speaking at this point in the episode, it really makes it seem as if Spongebob was doing this the whole time. I know that Spongebob annoying people and causing craziness is the main purpose of the show, but most of those were just in quick short scenes and stuff like this happened for very long parts of this episode. Don't get me wrong, it could be a lot worse, and there are some episodes where things do get a lot worse, but um, I'm not sure. Maybe since it goes on and on throughout the episode, it could start to feel old after a while. Of course, the scenes at Goo Lagoon go all over the place, and it's not just Spongebob being at the stall after he puts Bubble Buddy in there the entire time. We also have Spongebob making Pearl cry and calling the other dancers fat, but I also feel like it's a little bizarre that Spongebob didn't at least clarify that he was talking about Bubble Buddy to the dancers. The dancers even clearly knew that it was Spongebob making the fat statement. I get that all of this is supposed to build up to the twist where Bubble Buddy becomes alive at the very end, but I feel like there could have been a better way to execute this. And the Bikini Bottomites just shrugging it all off at the end, after they were so furious a few moments ago, was a bit weird. I guess it's because Bubble Buddy left Bikini Bottom and they know that Spongebob won't be doing anything like what he just did today, but it's not very clear. This is also just a nitpick, but I always wondered what kind of funny jokes Spongebob was talking about after Bubble Buddy came to life. Otherwise he couldn't tell such funny jokes! I have no idea what he was talking about. Does this mean that everything Bubble Buddy and Spongebob were doing earlier were supposed to be jokes? The bubble money, the lactose intolerance, waiting for two hours at the stall, the high tide? I don't know anymore. Bubble Buddy didn't even speak until the end, so what the hell were these jokes that Spongebob was talking about? I feel like some of these things could have been executed better. I do like Bubble Buddy coming alive at the end, but I still don't get a few of the things done here. I completely get how Bubble Buddy is a fan favorite character, and I agree. The concept of making a friend is used creatively in this episode, and I do like some of the things that happen here, but I think maybe some of the scenes at Goo Lagoon could have been better. But let's not be too negative here, let's talk about the Viking. Leif Erikson Day is the holiday at play here, and I'm sure when we watched this episode as kids, we thought the holiday was made up, especially since it's called Leif Erikson Day. Leif Erikson Day. I sure thought that. Eventually, we all learned what it's really about. Leif Erikson Day is on October 9th, and it's to honor Leif Erikson, the Norse adventurer who led the first Europeans across the continent of North America. If that's the case, that could raise a few questions if you really want to dive into the nitty gritty nitpicky stuff. Like, how does this random town at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean know about a holiday honoring a European from over 1,000 years ago? Of course, episode 222, Dear Vikings from season 6, does have Vikings in it, but I don't know if that raises more questions or answers. But obviously, your average viewer is not going to think of that. And as we've already established, I'm not your average viewer. Okay, I went to some places there, so now let's go back to what I said earlier. Is this episode a good episode? While I like every episode because of my love for the show, I will always understand why the bad episodes are considered bad. So I will reiterate that I don't think this episode is bad, but it's far from the best. 
I think it's above average, but more in the middle of the spectrum. I understand a lot of people love it, and I totally get why. I remember a former neighbor of mine always loves this episode, and it was one of the episodes she would bring up a lot when we talked in the neighborhood. So I'm probably wrong. And with that, I think that this episode isn't the best of the season, but a fine episode nonetheless. Bubble Buddy is a decent episode. It has some great scenes, no doubt, but it does feel like a few of the other parts are a little questionable or like they could have played out a bit better. A few of the lines are a little baffling, but the concept itself is pretty creative and used decently well here. I wouldn't call it a masterpiece of an episode, but I would still say it's good. And with that, there's only one thing left to say. Happy Alcohol Day, folks.